out. It's going to be good. So we're going to team teach today, and uh, it's always fun for us because we uh, we flow with the Holy Ghost every time, but especially, specifically when we do this, we prepare individually, and then we get together, and the Lord just kind of culminates, puts puts it together when we get here, and so it's interesting how it works every time. I think it's kind of fun, and we have a good time. Are you all awake? You all look kind of sleepy today. We've got some folks out. We need to be praying for our body. There's some people that are sick and uh, not feeling well. So let's just let's just plead the blood over this house, this this church, this family. These are family members, and um, we speak healing and health and wholeness over everyone. I know Bonnie's down and Sandra's down and different ones. So we just speak healing over them in Jesus' name. It can't stay, right? We have authority over it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's go ahead and do that. Father, we just thank you so much for the body that you've called us into, Lord God, that we are affected by what anybody's going through, Lord God, and we can affect it also. Lord, I thank you that you've given us the power in the name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, that we can, we can speak life. Yes. That we don't have to be impressed by what somebody's going through. We can be, be impressed by what you went through mm-hmm. to take them victoriously yeah, through true. that. And so, that's Father, true. we just thank you that right now that we know you. We trust in you like we sang this morning, Lord God. And, and we put our trust in you right now in lifting up our brothers and sisters. Lord God, we just thank you for healing Bonnie, for healing Stacy, Lord God, for, that you're, you're their healer. And so we speak healing anointing into their bodies right now. Mm -hmm. And Lord, we just enjoy this. We enjoy this applying your word and your truth into their lives right now. And knowing, God, that you're working on their behalf to affect a healing and a cure according to your word. And we trust in you right now, Father. Lord, we thank you for this morning. We thank you that you're here this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God, we just come expecting from your heart today in a great way hallelujah that this is an appointed time in your presence lord god and so we just savor it right now we we put a high value on what you're going to impart to our hearts this morning lord god and we give you thanks for it we joy in your presence this morning in jesus name Amen. amen amen hallelujah so like pastor kim said uh we're gonna bounce off of each other a little bit this morning. And uh, how many know what's coming up this week? We have a special day this week, do we not? Um, Nobody knows. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all don't know? It's Valentine's Day. Mm-hmm. and uh, Wow, we got some people who need to be thinking ahead. <laughs> Are you all ready for Valentine's, Valentine's Day? It's not like Christmas, we know, but... So I, I want to talk today about, um, let's see if this thing, oh, praise the Lord. Uh, I'm going to go about this another way here. Uh, Can we turn to, let's turn in our Bibles to Philippians 1. That's going to be our main text for today. Philippians 1, 9 through 11. Praise the Lord. Let me do something. I'm going to go ahead and read this. Uh, I don't know what translation that is, but I'll read it in the Amplified. And this I pray that your love may abound yet more and more and extend to its fullest development in knowledge and all keen insight, that your love may display itself in greater depth of acquaintance and more comprehensive discernment. There's a lot of stuff in there about love. (laughs) So that you may surely learn to sense what is vital and approve and prize what is excellent and of real value, recognizing the highest and the best and distinguishing the moral differences, and that you may be untainted and pure and unerring and blameless, so that with heart sincere and certain and unsullied you may approach. That's a lot of words uh, describing, descriptive words. The day of Christ, not stumbling or causing others to stumble, May you abound in and be filled with the fruits of righteousness, of right standing with God and right doing, which comes from, comes through Christ, the anointed one, to the honor and the praise of God, that his glory may be both manifested and recognized. Amen. So, 
How many remember uh, grade school and Valentine's Day? Anybody remember? I, uh, We're doing it again. I'm over. trying to remember. You know, it's, it's, we went to Bill Gaither last night, uh, uh, and uh, they, have a, they have a resident uh, joker on there that likes to make fun of him continuously through the thing. And I think they're just kind of playing off of his age a little bit. Um, uh, and actually, I think he's pretty sharp. I think they kind he's of plan, plan a lot of that. But it, it, was, it was a lot of fun. Um, but I'm, So it, it's not that far back for me, but I'm still trying to remember what grade school was like. Didn't, didn't, didn't you do the, on Valentine's, you know, when Valentine's Day come, you're supposed to make up all those little stupid little <laughs> Valentine's cards, stupid. you know, for all your friends. And, 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 and they say, will you be my Valentine, right? It's like... Yeah. It's kind of awkward, and it's like they're they're thrusting upon this upon little children. Well, you get a list to, of names, and the yeah, they and, and to, to people to invite to be a, a, a Valentine, and and but for me, and I, this is my personal confession. There was usually like one that was like really qualifying for that <laughs> that got to be included in there, and you could kind of see if there might be any kind of sparks that might come. From that thing, I remember one one of these girls. I remember it was Valentine's Day, and I don't know where she got this, but she she got a whole box of bubble gum. You know the bubble gum that was like in wrappers. You know single wrappers. You know double bubble. Double yeah, yeah the double bubble thing. And it's like I was feeling some real love. I mean bubble gum. I mean it, it was not just it's actually it's actually bubble gum. You know it's like the real deal. You know this is the real thing going on. And you know, even even back back then, you know, you're, you, you know, I've told you about Judy Rhodes, you know, finding the the watch in the alley and giving it to her, and <laughs> her parents making know. her give it back to me and all that stuff. But you he know, even used watch. even in grade school, and it was amazing back then. I walked two blocks to school. My wife would not begin to let no. Braden walk anywhere. No way. He doesn't let him. She doesn't let him go out the front door. You know. <laughs> but yeah, that was back in another day in in realm. But I remember, you know, if, if you have any sense as a little kid, you can spot the ones that have promise, you know. <laughs> it's like little Braden, you know, I told you, he, he, he said, school's a lot more fun when there's somebody there that likes you, you know. Didn't he say something like that? Yeah. It was the, the crux of it. And then, and, you know, he's having a hard time with school, and he said, but, but now I have a girl that has a crush on me, and her, her name is, I'm not going to say what her name is, but it was kind of funny because the other day I said, so uh, well, you are you excited say. to see to see such and such? And he said, no, she doesn't have a crush on me anymore. I have a crush on the, my point Another is, one. he's in first grade. <laughs> he's having crushes and stuff. And it's like, <clears throat> so. There's this, there's, there's this thought, though, that's going on in Valentine's Day. And, and you give all those little, you know, I was going to even get a picture. Remember those stupid little uh, <laughs> candies that you only get on Valentine's Day? I was, I was thinking about, you know, there's a really great marketing scheme, except for it only works on Valentine's Day. And it says, I love you and other little Be things mine. on there, you know. and, and uh, Forever. So there's this entrance and this thrusting upon children, this concept of being a valentine and um you know it's kind of it's kind of silly and it's all about love it's all about love but there's this opening of this idea of of actually having a commitment of some would you be my valentine you know and that means that there's going to be some kind of Something going. The, th the problem with, with, with for me was I never really knew what that was supposed to be, so it was kind of a, a mystery. Remember the Wonder Years that that series, you know, that, that kids always wondering about everything. That's kind of kind of what I remember. It's just kind of wondering. Okay, there's love, but who and what and what does that what mean? Does it mean? It's, it's bubble gum and and lost watches and you know all this kind of stuff. <laughs> but <laughs> There's this, there's this, um, there's this opening of this concept about a relationship with somebody where you're actually caring about them, caring about them. 
And so in the invitation, would you be my Valentine, there's this there's implication that I'm going to do something for you that it has to do with love. And there's, again, you might not really know what that is, and, and that's very natural, and hopefully you don't know what everything is. But, <laughs> but there's this opening of, of what that is to, to a heart, to a little, even a little heart, and there's this idea of love and what that might be. And so there's these givings of Valentine's, and we're going to have Valentine's Day this week in my... Okay. <laughs> my, my wife has already reserved a roaring fork for us on Friday. I don't, I don't wait. <laughs> she, she's the planner. Why even bother? Why even bother coming up with things? She's always gonna. She's got it done ahead of time. Now, she's let already... me just interject something here. I was watching. I was watching uh, Joyce Meyer, uh, one of her things videos, and she was talking about how she loves her husband. He's so you've heard her testimony how awesome he is to her, and he treats her so well. And he sits and listens to her all the time, and he wants to be there. She'll say, "You stay home," and he'll, "No, I want to be there." So she was talking about how it's, they were on the road, and her one son is a planner. And he does all these fabulous things and gifts and rents limos and plans ahead and plans ahead and, and gifts and things, gifts and things. And so she said, I started pl planting the ideas like two weeks ahead, telling my husband, you know, some ideas of what she wanted. He's not a gift buyer. He, he's good at all these other things, but he's just not a gift giver, you know. And so she, she saw they were getting in the car and she said her son had this beautiful pink bag with all these beautiful things popping out of it. And she said, my husband got in the car with a CVS bag, a pharmacy bag. <laughs> and she said, I pulled it out, and she said there was candy. There was M&Ms, a bag of M&Ms and a card. She said, I don't even eat candy. <laughs> and she said, you know, the card was really sweet, and I thought, well, that's nice, you know. But she was in front of thousands of people confessing her, her need for her husband to step up. And so it was really cute because he's on the front row and he got up and he said, well, I thought I'd just embarrass you in front of everybody. He said, you might think all you got was a bag of M&Ms, but at home there's petal, rose petals starting from the beginning of the door all the way through the house. There's two dozen roses sitting somewhere. He said, and there's gifts strewn across the house all over the place. <laughs> and she was completely embarrassed because here she had confessed all this need. What are you trying to say? No, I'm not. I'm just saying, <laughs> I just thought it was really cute because she had a need and he had already fulfilled it without her knowing and she was complaining in front of everybody. So it was funny. It kind of fit right there. <laughs> So, so, that's beside the point. Uh, <laughs> where do you get these pedals and stuff? Or <laughs> so you don't even know where to get them. <laughs> I'm just she kidding. She doesn't even know. I'm just kidding. She's got kind of a red car out there, too. I don't know if anybody knows yeah. that when you drove up. Okay, never mind. That's my Valentine's All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, so there's something going on with all this gift giving, you know. There, 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 there's, 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 there's magic taking place, and, and I don't know about you, but I, I, my heartbeat even kind of went up once or twice, you know. For who? I'm talking who? about when I was a little kid. Oh. For you too, but you know, <laughs> we're talking about these these little Valentines, little you know. Uh, <laughs> so I too much sugar that day. So. <laughs> I I want to I want to look at something else that's going on that that you don't even realize. So, with these, even from the time when you're a little kid like that, even with Braden, in these in these Valentines that are being given, there's something actually. I think it's the way we're made. I think God made us this way. It has to do with our heart. But, you know, our hearts don't get anything done without our heads. It's like she's just talking right now. I'm discovering all this pedal stuff and whatnot. I've got a heart for her. I just need to find out how to get my head connected with just that. Get your head hooked up with her heart. Right? <laughs> Wait, look, before you get into the serious stuff, I want to read this, this really quick. I, I found this. I discovered this. Why are you interrupting me? I was right in the middle. Well, I know. But before you get into that, there's a song 
that this country western guy he wrote after he and his girlfriend or somebody broke up, you know, he was with his wife or somebody, I don't know. And he wrote this song, and I thought it was very appropriate because it's going to, like, kind of depict quite the opposite of what you're getting ready to talk about. <laughs> so, so his name is Jaron. I forget his last name. But the name of the song even is called Jaron and the Long Road to Love. The Long Road to Love. Okay, so he wrote this song. I haven't been to church since I don't remember when. He goes to church after the breakup because he's desperate. I haven't been to church since I don't know remember when. Things were going great till they fell apart again. So I listened to the preacher as he told me what to do. He said, you can't go hating others. You have done wrong to you. Who have done wrong to you? Sometimes we get angry, but we must not condemn. Let the, Lord, the good Lord do his job, and you just pray for them. Like God's going to slap them down or something, I guess. I pray your brakes go out running down a hill. I pray a flower pot falls from a windowsill. <laughs> Knocks you in the head like I'd like to. I pray your birthday comes and nobody calls. I pray you're flying high when your engine's tulls. <laughs> I pray all your dreams never come true. Just know wherever you are, honey, I pray for you. <laughs> Do you now you know why it's a long road to love. Because he's doing it all wrong. It's totally opposite of what you're supposed to be doing. So that's a good prelude. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> can you now I just want to say, can you imagine this man's made money off this song? That just makes me mad. <laughs> I don't know. Money. That's pretty funny. Well, it's not funny. He means it. It's, ser <laughs> it's a serious song. No, they don't mean any of that he stuff. They it. just sit around trying to figure out lyrics for stuff. But <laughs> eating crackers <laughs> in bed. <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, we're having fun this morning, right? So <laughs> let's see. Where were we going here? You're redirect. Um, redirect. So. <laughs> So all of us are familiar with falling in love and, and that, that thing that we would call the heart and, the, and we're, we're attracted to somebody that's, you know, somebody that looks good in our opinion. Isn't that funny how different people look good to different people? Oh boy. You know, you, I won't go there too much, oh, but yeah, it's like, really it's really up. interesting. Somebody likes everybody, you know, it's like. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> somebody likes everybody. <laughs> but. <laughs> You can put that one on Facebook. <laughs> Somebody likes everybody, Pastor Stephen. But 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 the, but the problem is that uh, that that real love is something that requires something that that your mind actually gets involved with, and in, in this process, it, it can't just be emotions. It can't just be a, a heightened uh, you know pulse or a, a you know temperature. Um, you know, you can't just start sweating, and that's that's love. You know, <laughs> not necessarily. There has to be at some point something where the mind starts getting involved, and I I just want to look at, at at this process of what is taking place in the mind itself that is equipping you to to be a companion, but also it's it's actually. <clears throat> a state of mind that enables success. So I, I, I want to, and, and so this becomes a, a reason why we give out Valentines to more than just our sweetie. This is why we come up, become a part of a body, that we're, we're born into a body where this Valentine thing is not supposed to just be for, for her. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to actually care for each other, and it becomes the way God's designed it, and I, it's a very natural thing too, that in the development of this Valentine, behind the scenes of that Valentine, there's a thought process going on. You know, be before, and that's why they have little kids do that, because there's a thought process going on. Every time you get wonderful Joyce Meyer and her husband... The, the hero of our story this morning. <laughs> In the process that it took for him to think of those things, to put them into place, there's something going on. Our, our minds are incredibly made. And they, they're made in such a way that they function at their highest level 
when they're freed to be what they're supposed to be. And the, the love process is part of that that they're made to be. It's not just about the wonderful experience of a relationship itself. It actually is an opening up of the mind. And that's, um, I, I wanted to get here before we got to that verse, but I want to look at the verse from this perspective now because sometimes when we're, even when we're thinking about, because you know, over and over again through the New Testament, it, ta- it tells us to, to, to grow and for our love to expand. And it, talk, it, it talks about getting our minds involved in this process. Yeah, it's not just a feeling. It, it's not supposed to just be what we are spontaneously responding to from whatever is naturally pro- propelling us at the moment. Mm-hmm. No, because then you can fall out of love. Yeah. And love is never meant to be fallen out of. Right? Right? That's right. If you're being guided by just that, it, it will. But I want to look at what God has designed in the way we've been made as human beings for there to be something behind that Valentine inv- invitation that is actually being formed in our minds in the patterns of our thought. That in a Valentine, in a love invitation, in a love expression, there's a transformation and a patterning of the mind. Now, in the inverse of this is very much true. Has ever ha, Have you ever had an experience where the opposite of love is the atmosphere that you're in? It might be something where you are acting out of love yourself. This, this is why relationships are smack dab in the middle of what I'm talking about, and all of us can relate to this, hopefully, this morning. When you get into a conflict, when you get into strife, when you get into something that is the actual opposite of love, it disables your thought processes of perceiving things correctly. Have you ever experienced that? Mm -hmm. Where you don't even, you you can't even make a right decision because you're not even thinking right anymore. How many know that something happened to Cain when he got offended at his brother? He was completely out of love, wasn't he? And he made the most, the first, well, I guess his mom and dad kind of made some bad choices too. But he made such a, he he wouldn't, he he loved his brother before that, right? And and he stepped out of love. And what it caused him to be able to, for his mind to be able to conceive something that was completely wrong, And brought about the death of his own brother. How amazing is that? But this is the power of the opposite of what we're talking about here this morning. Did you take the inverse of that? And you take somebody that disallows strife. That disallows those things. And and embraces an attitude of love. And what it does is it puts your brain, I don't know if you remember Pastor Kim shared on this before, some of the the patterns that your mind gets into. There's brain waves going on. And behind that valentine is actually an opportunity for the brain to get operating in in, in the processes of love that will enable it to be successful. That's what I, I see in this passage here. Mm-hmm. Um, let me get this. It says abound, that you may abound in love. And that word abound means to exceed a fixed number. And that's, you said something about when you're not walking in love, it, you just stop. Everything kind of just, there's destruction. But when you're abounding in love, there's a moving forward. There's a exceeding, abundant supply of the spirit, I believe, when we're operating out of a place in love. And that's also a place of wisdom and a place of enablement where God can do something. But we shut the door to his ability to get things to us when we're out of love, when we're not in that place. We're actually in a place of strife and contention and dissension and discord. And the word says that where there's strife, every evil work abounds. There's the abound word, but it's not about love. It's about 
evil works. So, and we can be in strife not only in our socially, but we can be in strife mentally. We can be, we can have things going on in our mind against people, against circumstances, against ourselves. Probably ourselves is one of the biggest ones that we have to overcome. We get in strife over ourselves. We get mad and and, you know, we've got to love ourselves. You can't love somebody else if you're not loving yourself, you know? you got to be able to accept who you are in Christ. Not, not the old man, but the new man in Christ. And there's that place of love that you've, God's doing a new thing in you. I think that's the key to being able to even do any of this, is you got to be able to love yourself first. Amen. Amen. So I, I had written down... So biblical love for God and others is the supreme virtue of a Christian life. They are not separate. They are joint together. John puts it in 1 John 4, 16, God is love, and the one who abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. And this is the commandment that we have from him, that the one who loves God should love his brother also. We know this. It's simple. When you're thinking, oh, I love my brother, but or my sister, but when love really abounds is when we have the temptation to get offended or be upset or for strife or contention to step in instead of. And we have to choose the way of love. We have to let love lead. We've talked about that before. Amen. And, and here's, here's what is really cool, that every time we, we've been given some real directives from God, real examples from God, I just want to encourage us that this morning, there's more going on than just, you know, emotional being, being uh, sensitive. It, there's actually an activation of God prosperity enablement in our minds in that. So every time we're choosing this, because... Love is always a choice, and that's why we're, we're told in this passage, let me just hit this passage again, because I, I, man, this, this came out at me big time. It, it's, it, it said, I pray that your love will grow more and more, and let it be based on what? Wishy-washy feelings, or whether somebody put their makeup on yet this morning, <laughs> uh, uh, no, based upon knowledge. And where do you get the knowledge from? You get the knowledge from God, don't you? Get, you get it from His Word mm-hmm. yeah. and understanding. Where does understanding come from? And, and this is partly what I want to get to this morning. Mm-hmm. Um, this knowing of love does, is, isn't just information. The knowing of love is like what Pastor Kim just said. It's every time you choose what God has said, and there might be self-sacrifice that goes along with this. In fact, there will be. You know, what, what is St. What is Valentine's known for? Martyr. He was a martyr for love. He cared about people so much that he gave his life. In fact, there's, there's three different people that are considered to be uh, possibly St. Valentine. Mm-hmm. Um, but common with all of them is they gave their life. Their life was given for this cause. So, in the understanding and the knowledge, there's going to be a putting down of self that is going to take what, not, what love really is and make it personal, make it real in your own life. But every time that takes place, as opposed to the inverse that is shutting down your mind, there's an opening up of the mind. And, and I will encourage us in this. Take note that every time you're choosing the way of love, that there's a freeing of your mind. Mm -hmm, There's a freeing of your mind to actually take on the life of God it was made to to experience. You will be pure and without blame until until the day Christ returns. You will be filled with the fruit of right living. There's What's the fruit of right living? Prosperity, money, right? Peace, joy, productivity. I'll tell you what, one of the most righteous fruits in your life is going to be you producing what you were made to produce. And that requires your mind 
functioning as it needs to function. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And every choice of love, every response to, to the Valentine <laughs> that, that just might look like it's, it's superficial is a very deep process that God is wanting to impart to us of an enabling of our minds. Yeah. Amen? Amen. You will be filled with the fruit of right living produced by Jesus Christ. What's so cool about this is now it's not just you. It's your creator activating your thought processes yeah. that enable you to actually be who you were made to be. Um, let, me just, let me just touch on one other thing here, and I think it'll, it might go along with what you're saying. Um, so the path of the righteous, to go along with this passage... Is like the morning sun. Wouldn't this be nice for your path? Mm -hmm. It shines brighter till the full light of day. Now, I think, I think that passage is wonderful because you can fill in however you want it to fill in for your particular life. For th when things are right, it will become bright. However that applies yeah, to right. you. Yeah. Amen? Amen? but it will require your thought processes. Mm -hmm. Everything, even by, and this is why <laughs> we have faith because of what we know. Yeah. We, Knowledge. faith comes by what? Hearing. Mm -hmm. Hearing and, and hearing by the word of God, but not just hearing by what you do with what you hear. Because it's with what you do that you get understanding. Not just with what you hear. That's good. It's when it's applied that it becomes understanding. Mm -hmm. And that, that is when the mind is actually getting, it getting in, in, the, in, an, in a process, yeah. in a pattern. Mm -hmm. Do you have any things in, 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 that you just get used to saying things a certain way? You just get used to, to reacting in a certain way. And sometimes you don't even realize it. And it's a stronghold. You know, the whole battle is in our minds, yeah. even about God. Yeah. We can say it's in the heart, but you know what? The heart without the mind is just empty. Mm -hmm. it requires the, the mind. And so what I really love about this love, what I love about this love thing, is it gets involved in the processes of our mind. And we just start simply acting on what God has said about love. And it enables our thought processes mm -hmm. in those other areas of our life that need to know what is right. What, what is the... Uh, the um, another translation, it said, it helps you to discern what is right so that you can discern. Do you ever have a problem discerning? That's wisdom, isn't it? Be, being able to see what's right. Because I'll tell you, you begin to be, get in the, in the process of seeing what is right. You can't help but be successful in business, in school, in relationships, in every other thing. But it all begins with just being right with love. Mm -hmm. Because that's how we were made. Can I just Amen. add something? Um, biblical love is bound up with knowledge and discernment. Discernment is actually, I looked it up, it's actually judge, judging something by the Spirit. And this is why the world has a problem with love, is because they're judging things by how they feel and what they think. They're not judging, they're not discerning by the Spirit. And of course, we know the things of the Spirit are not conceived or perceived by the flesh. They have to be perceived or understood by the Spirit. And so this true knowledge, it, the single Greek word for true knowledge is epignosis, and it refers to an intensive, deep, spiritual knowledge or a knowing. And the way we have that knowing and that understanding, you touched on it, was we get to know God more, and, but we get to know his word. We get in his word. His word is his, is his will and what he has to say. And so when we find out more about what he has to say, then there's more discernment for us to have. Does that make sense? And so what you're saying here is love is not just an ooey-gooey thing that we're just... Because the problem with that is 
the thing that gets in the way is me, myself, and I. Because then it becomes about, it's all about me. It's all about how I'm treated and how I'm, what I need to do and what's right for me. And that's not the way of love. For God so loved the world that he gave. He gave his only begotten son. So real love, true love, true discernment, true knowledge and discernment of love is a giving love. It's a self-sacrificing love. It's a laying your life down for somebody else's love. It's, uh, it's different than what the world perceives it to be. And that's why we can't judge it by what the world thinks at all. It has to be based on what the truth, what the Word of God says. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, a lot of times, we, we even in God, we want to we get a knowledge of God um, and be able to actually operate in faith and operate in these other things. And even be, being able to discern what that is begins with love. It, 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 it's kind of like uh, the 101s in college, you know, and, and the, <laughs> in sports, the, the, rudiments are in, the, the rudiments are in, in, uh, in music. They're, they're, they're basic things that if you don't get those, just forget about the rest of it. You know what I mean? I, I know for a drummer that there's rudiments, that there's paradiddles, and there's other little things that just forget about playing the drums unless you, unless you do these things first. And, and the way we've been made, even, even for success in life, and this is kind of what I want to get to, there, there's a real plus for us in finding out what the little things in love are doing to the big things in our mind. That's good. Yeah. Amen? Mm-hmm. Well, your faith works by love. And yeah, faith I, requires you know, the love. I think this is a huge, huge key. A lot of people say, why am I not seeing change? Why are things not working for me? Why, 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 why? I'm believing God. I'm, I'm, I'm tithing. I'm, you know, I'm doing everything I know to do. But if we don't get this one key rudiment thing... None of it's going to work. Faith works by love. And we're not, we're not perfect. We, we're going to fail. You know, we all fall short. But we've got to do it the way God wants us to do it. We've got to. And we, let's learn from it, not beat ourselves up over it, but learn and move forward with it um, instead of going back. What happens is if you're like me, you feel bad about something you've done and then you end up like it pushes you back instead of moving you forward. And you've got to make it like learning from this side of the mountain to get on the other side. Don't just stop and let it push you down the hill. And then you've got to start all over again. Pick your pants back up, put your boots back on, and keep walking and say, I learned something from that. And, and that requires humility. Because uh, the problem is a lot of times we don't move forward because there's too much pride and or false humility. We think, oh well, I'm just you know, I I never can move forward. I just, I just have this problem, and that's false humility, because it's not that's not who you are. That's and that's going to keep you from moving forward. Then we end up getting into victim mentality. There's all these steps that end up taking us back down the mountain instead of moving us forward. And so let's just be strong in the Lord, in the power of His might. Lean on His strength and His ability. And realize the biggest thing is finding out who you are in Christ. That it's no longer you that lives, but it's Christ that's living in you. And you have the mind of Christ that you can do all things through him. And because of that, you can operate in this kind of love. You can. We can do it. We can do it. Amen. That, I, I love and it that it's, it's not just up to us. It's actually a nature we've, been take, yeah. we've taken on in Christ. But we a- have to get our minds involved in the process, though. It's, uh, we've been born into this, but over and over again, we're told to grow in it. Mm-hmm. But yeah. I, I, what I really love is that we've been given the, the way for this to develop, but we have to put it into action. So I just want to go through this process a little bit more. Uh, so, um, you know, in Proverbs, it's, it's, it talks about the guy with the evil eye, that you're not supposed to eat his dainties. You're not supposed to... <laughs> You're not supposed to be suckered in <laughs> by what he's saying because how he thinks in his heart is really who he is. 
What God wants to do is to begin to, to, to affect how we think in our heart. Amen? This is a love process. You cannot fake who you are. Who you are is going to be who you think you are. <laughs> right? Now, you can, you can, again, you can put on makeup. You can, you can act like something else. But who you think is who you are. From, from Proverbs there, right? It says, for, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. So you can never fake who you actually are. Who you are is going to be the, the, the result, the, um, the product of where your thoughts are. That's why if you're going to, who you are is character. Your ability to be successful in life has everything to do with your character. And we can actively affect our character by getting our minds hooked up in the obedience to love. Every time we obey love, it becomes a changing of our thoughts into those that are identifying us as somebody that looks like God. Amen? Yeah. All right, so let me give you another one here. I'm, I'll just go through this process real quick here. Um, now that you've purified yourself by doing what? Not just knowing the truth, but doing what? Did you know that the, the truth will set you free? But it has but but you can be you can be like a little parakeet in a cage with the door open mm -hmm. and you're free, but you just sit in the cage you're, because it requires going out. It requires action, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So even though we've been given a nature, we have been given a way of thinking. This if we can look at love as something that is, that is a way of thinking, it will allow us to get in a process for it to become effective in our lives. Who, who purified yourself? You did. You did. By doing what? By choosing the truth. Okay, you're, you're given an opportunity to go out and do something very dastardly. What did you do? You chose not to, didn't you? We can think of it this way, because this is usually how we like to look about sin. You know, somebody that goes and does, partakes of some terrible substance, or they get in a physical relationship that's obviously wrong, and we can say, oh, that's just terrible, that's terrible. But what keeps you from that? It's a thought process that says, no, I'm not going to do that for this reason. Right? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I'm made in the image of God. I'm not going to allow that to happen to me, for one thing, but everything is now driven by a thought process that's obedience to love. And in that, every time we obey love, what are we doing? We're choosing purity. And this isn't just purity in our, it's a purity in, for our life, for things to be right in our life, for us to have a choice in a business relationship, and for us to be able to have the wisdom of God that is based upon a thought press process that our choices of love enabled. Does this make sense? It's actually very powerful. <clears throat> okay. It's kind of like, how many have heard of, of Caroline Leaf? Y'all, I've talked about her before, but she's a, she's a Christian doctor, and she's done 30 years of study of how the mind and the brain are connected. And she now has an app. What's the name of that app I sent you? She has an app. Um, she talks about how you can, your physical brain is responses, it, it responds to what you're saying. So if you're complaining or if you're negative, your brain has like a tree. It looks like a tree inside there. And after a lot of complaining and negativity, it actually changes the physical part of your brain it looks like a like a briar tree but after so many days of just speaking the word just speaking the word positive it starts to develop and looks like an oak tree it, it's called switch and switch is uh it's an app by caroline leaf and you can go on there and and in 21 days if you will do every day 
She has you focus on the word and say the word out loud. I haven't gotten through the whole thing, but I've been reading her book too. But for, I think it's 10 to 17 minutes a day, you can actually switch your brain and change your thinking. Because the problem is, he mentioned it when I talked about it before, cortisol is released in your system, in your body when, you're, when you complain and when you're negative and you're not walking in love. And that cortisol affects your cognitive ability and how you think. And it produces revets or cr- crevet. Cre- what am I saying? Rut. Rut. <laughs> no, don't help me. Ruts. In- <laughs> ruts in your brain. So what happens is you automatically, when something happens, your response automatically goes back to that same rut every time. It's kind of like when, you, when you're trying to drive a car down a road that has really terrible ruts and you yeah, try to get out of it, exactly. it just keeps going back. In. But that's what she's created the switch thing to do is to help change your thinking and get rid of those ruts because it's, it's physical, but it's also spiritual. It's both. It's not just spiritual. It is physical. It's a physical thing too. And that's what we're saying here about love is not just a heart thing, but it's a mind thing. It affects your ability to be a success in everything in life because it's yeah. creating this this ability for you to discern spiritually how to respond and how to be and how to act. And it's such an amazing thing that God's created for us to have this ability to draw from. But it's how, again, it's how our faith works. And it's, it's, so, it's so pivotal. And it seems so easy, yet it seems like it's the, it's the very targeted thing that the enemy tries to get us diverted from, is, is to get us off course with this. And offense comes in or, or you know, whatever comes in, and it causes us to get off. And, and we're not flowing in what God's created for us. You know, I think you, you had one... Uh... You had one of these pictures over here that I I was just thinking about this until it becomes important enough to you. What we're even talking about this morning, if if it's not, if if you're thinking this is just optional, this is a good idea. I think I don't really have to do that. No, it's no. The path of the righteous gets brighter and brighter. To me, when she was saying that, I'm thinking, you know, the path of the bright of the righteous doesn't have some ruts in it. Yeah, it doesn't have things that are taking you off the road all the time it's 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 a path that has become smooth yeah by the thought processes that have taken it out of the ruts but there's our part see we're always thinking it's a spiritual thing that oh i'll just you know god will just do it it there's always a god part and there's always an a me part and we there you go and it's like you said we can't just expect things just to happen we've got to do our part so the first thing in that scripture that I wanted to point out, it says that you may approve the things that are excellent. The NIV translates it to discern what is best. And the Moffat paraphrases it, enabling you to have a sense of what is vital. That's what love does. It gives you a sense of what is vital. What is the most important thing here? What is the priority? And that if it's a priority, you'll find a way. If it isn't, You'll find an excuse. I like that. And it's true. We do what we want to do. If it's a priority in our lives, we'll do it. If it's not, we'll make an excuse. Um, But love can be, there can be excuses. Man, this is, there can be excuses for us to not walk in love. Well, I got treated this way. Y'all, you know, you you not know what my past is. You don't know how, you know, my daddy treated me. Or you don't know what I've gone through or you know, I know lo- there's losses in our lives that, and culture and different things that we've been raised up in, mistakes we've made ourselves that have created this path. And we can blame everything and anybody and everybody on why we can't walk on this love path. But the priority here is you'll find a way if it's important enough. And it's the most important thing for us. It is the most important thing for us for our faith to work. Do you want me to go to the next one? Uh, well, oh, you got uh, something else? Yeah. <laughs> go ahead. This is fun. All right. <laughs> uh, he doesn't like it. <laughs> I'm ra- I'm rattling his cage. A oh bit. no, it's it's fine. <laughs> I, I I just like these verses though because there there is a, there is so much in the word that that describes this and we're familiar with this. But it's, this next one, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to do what. 
Present your body as a living sacrifice to become a valentine. <laughs> right? I'm going to sacrifice myself for this cause. Because that's what love every time is. It's a sacrificing of yourself for the sake of somebody else. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. And this is your true proper worship, but look what happens next here. And do not conform to the pattern of this world. That's the ruts, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That's the way other people, well, everybody thinks this. Well, everybody right. acts this way. Emotionally. Right? Mm -hmm. That's what they do in the sitcoms. That's what they do in the soap operas. Says, but what, but what are we supposed to do? Be transformed by doing what? Renew your mind. Be transformed. What part of you is getting transformed? You know, sometimes when I thought of this, I thought it was just a renewed mind. But no, this is all of you mm -hmm. is getting transformed when your mind is getting transformed. And how does your mind get transformed? What have we been talking about? The word. Every time you respond in love, your mind is getting transformed, yeah. and your, 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 it's getting renewed. Your mind is getting renewed. It's getting graded. It's get, a grader is coming along, and it's filling in all the rets. Every time you choose love, it's getting rid of a rut. Yeah. And what it's doing is it's transforming you. It's changing you. What did it say about that guy? He says, <laughs> about the guy with the evil eye. What did Proverbs say? It said he's, he's acting like something, but that's not, because that's not who he's thinking. It's not what he's thinking. The way for you to be changed is to change what you're thinking. You become renewed. Amen? You become transformed when your mind is renewed. How do you renew your mind? And you know, it's the Word of God, but what is the Word of God? It's love. What have we been commanded in the New Testament? It's love. Everything that we could that you could say you, you have to do this, it's love. So we can break it down to the, the rudiments of love. Every time it's chosen, something is changing in your mind, thought press processes. They're being conformed to God processes. And in that process is the transformation of you. Amen? Yeah. And it will affect your ability for success in life. Then you will be able, after what? After this transformation of who you are, you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. Mm -hmm. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. What does that sound like? That you can just sit back and say, oh, well, this is what God's will. No, this is you experiencing God's will. You're testing it. You're proving it. It's being proven true in your life. Mm -hmm. Why? Because now your thought processes are in line with his. Mm -hmm. And now who you are is hooked up with who he is. That's right. And now when you pray, you're praying according to his will. And what you're doing is according to his will. And you cannot help but be successful. That's where the favor of God rests. Amen? <laughs> is this good? I think it's pretty good stuff. Let me just commit your works to the Lord, and then what happens? Your thoughts. What is committing our works to the Lord? If God says, act this way, that's what I'm going to do. Amen? It doesn't take a whole lot of... You take your thought process out of obedience. Here's the problem with kids and obedience. If you're a kid, you know this. If you're a parent, you know this. <laughs> what is the problem with obedience in a child? What they think about it. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Right? If you, can take it, if you can take the thought process out of it. Right? They, obedience is immediate. Boy, that was kind of a nice phrase, wasn't it? Obedience is immediate. <laughs> Where thoughts processes are are excluded. And this 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 proverb says, if you can just commit your way, that's that means I take my thoughts out of the way, I just obey. Right? 
And then what follows? Your thoughts. And what are your thoughts? They define who you are. They, de they decide whether you're being transformed or you're conforming. Mm -hmm. Amen? Is that good? All right. Did you have something? Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Um, go back to that first verse we read, that Philippians. Oh. Philippians 1. This is my prayer that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so you may be able to discern what is best and be, may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ. In order to be sincere and blameless, how can we possibly be blameless? Um, these words do not imply perfection, which no one, including Paul, attains in his life. Rather, the word means to live with integrity. And that word, integrity, is not a word that you see much in our world right now. There are still some, but... Um, you know, we went, went to that concert he mentioned last night, and everything they did was excellence and in, integral. I mean, I just felt like it was, you know, of course it ministered to my roots, <laughs> all the old songs that we used to sing. But there's an integrity in presenting the Word of God in such a way where you're living it in your life. And I think I have a, do I have a in, integrity, or do you have it? To be sincere means to be pure, unmixed, without hypocrisy. So part of our integrity as Christians is we do what we say we're going to do. We mean what we say we mean. Um, to be blameless means to walk without stumbling. Paul used the word blameless to describe his own conscience before God and men uh, in Acts 24. Since God looks on the heart, to be sincere and blameless means to, to live openly before God, judging sin on the thought level. So... What does that say? I can't read it from here. Integrity, choosing courage over comfort. See, a lot of times, integrity is doing something that just isn't going to feel comfortable. Choosing what is right over what is fun or easy, and choosing to, do, to practice our values rather than just professing them. So integrity is, like you've been saying, it's actually acting on what we believe, what we know is, is true. And then the next one is, the scripture says, for the day of Christ is coming. We're to live in, in light of Christ coming. We're to live like he could be coming tomorrow. That's part of that scripture in Philippians 1. The Christian who's growing in discerning love is living in the light of Christ soon coming. When we, we all must stand before him. If you're living for personal happiness and fulfillment in this life, you'll live for self and you'll not live in love for God and others. Your, your thoughts, your ways, your desires will always come before others. But if you realize that today you could be face-to-face -face with Christ, it motivates you to godly living, to self-sacrificing love. So I thought this was kind of appropriate. Blessed are those who have not seen but still believe. I, I believe he's coming. Do you believe he's coming? Amen. Do y'all believe he's coming? They ended the, the concert last night with... Um, the king is coming, the king is coming. I just heard the trumpet sounding, and now his face I see. The king is coming, the king is coming. Praise God, he's coming for me. We used to sing that when I was a kid, and we believed that king, he was coming, you know. And I, I think it's easy to get so caught up in our world today and not realize he's coming. And we don't live with an expectancy like I'm talking about here, living in the light of Christ's coming. It's, it's biblical to do this. And then the next one is bearing fruit, having been filled with the fruit of righteousness, which comes, from, comes through Jesus Christ. The instant we trust in Christ, God imputes his righteousness to our account so that we have right standing with him. But the Christian life is a process of growing in righteous character um, and deeds. And the word fruit implies that it's a process and not something instantaneous. We, we planted a couple of fruit trees in the back of our 
house. I bought them at Costco. They were just little bitty, tiny little things. And it said on the sign that they were, what were they, peach trees? The sign said they were peach trees. I saw no evidence of one single peach on that tree when we planted it in the ground. <laughs> but boy, howdy, now it is just huge and blossoming and and it will produce fruit. The problem is we've not pruned it, and that's a whole other teaching that you have to be pruned and able to receive fruit. We don't have any fruit coming off that tree right now because we've not been doing the right thing. But my point is, is fruit, we have the ability to produce fruit in our lives. We've got, we've got it on the inside of us. A lot of folks say, I don't have the fruit of the Spirit developed in my life. Well, what do you need to develop it? Love is part of the fruit of the Spirit. That's the fruit of righteousness, and we're talking about that today. Um, the word in picture implies that it is the life of Christ working in and through us, and it produces that fruit. John 15, y'all know that's, that whole chapter talks about, I'm in the vine, and I can do nothing without him. As we grow in true knowledge of God and in discernment through his word, the fruit of the Spirit, which is the first characteristic of is love, it's produced in us, and we will become zealous for good deeds. And then the last thing, I'll, I'll do the last one so he can finish off, is to the glory and the praise of God. We see that in Scripture a lot. We are to live our lives to the glory and to the praise of God. As we abound in discerning love, which leads to godly character and good deeds, God will be exalted in and through us so that both we and others will praise him for his grace and his power. So it results, this way of love results in glory and praise unto God. And that's, that's why we were created. And for thy pleasure they were created. That's us. We were created for him to bring Amen. glory and to praise unto him. Amen. Well, I've got one more. Um, remember how James talks about this? Mm-hmm. Um, Perfect law of liberty. It's necessary uh, to not just hear, but to actually act. And I, I've I've referred to this already, but I just wanted to read this. Whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom. What is the perfect law that gives freedom? The Word. It's love, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's love. And continues in it, not forgetting what they heard, but doing what? But doing what? But doing, doing it. But doing it, right? Every time you do something, again, I, 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 went, to, uh, I went to music school. And um, I went to master classes, and they, we had some of the, the greatest guitar players uh, come and do a master class. And I went to master classes, I went to, but you know what helped me to become a guitarist? It was not going to the classes, it was going home and practicing for five hours a day. You know? That's what changed, what took what I was observing and made it mine. Mm-hmm. It's not what we. It's not going to church. It's not listening to Joel Osteen or Joyce Meyer or all the pillars of our faith. It's going home and doing it. Yeah. You could. We could have Jesus here today in person in the flesh, with sandals and long hair, <laughs> and whatever else he actually looked like. <laughs> he probably had a smell about him too that was from that culture. No. You know. No. I'm not saying it's a bad smell. I'm saying, there, there, the, the things about him. He, he could be here right now, and unless you went home and did what he said, it wouldn't do you any good. It's what you do with these things, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I'm going to tell you right now, tomorrow, tomorrow, I guarantee you, you're going to have an opportunity to put this in place. It always happens. The very thing that we, we speak on or teach on, the next day, you get, you're given an opportunity to put it into practice. And that should be a wonderful beckoning call to us. That I get, you know what was so inspiring to me in, in college was to go to a master class, get inspired. Because here's the challenge with a master class. How far you have to go and how... How far away you are from it and how meaningless it will be for you to do anything at all, I might as well just eat a Snickers. 
and be happy. You know what I mean? <laughs> the change, the, 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 the effect that it's supposed to have, even when we come here on a Sunday morning, what needs to take place is we need to come and say, I want to be affected. I want to be changed. And I want to go home and be inspired to practice. Yeah. Amen? Mm -hmm. To not just try to remember what it was even about, but to be so inspired that I can't wait to put it into action. Mm -hmm. If it really means anything, if this, if this truth, this is the word of God today. Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, we, we've sat here and tried to have fun with this, but it's the word of God. It will transform our lives. It will, it, it's the key element in your life for success. Because it transforms who you are, which is necessary for your success. Who you are. Can we just go through this? These, these few verses that talk about what love is and how love responds. Now, if you don't have our church app on your phone, get, your church, get the church app on your phone and go into the settings and get signed up, hit the little checkbox thing for the love group on there. And every day of the week, you're going to get a reminder of one of these elements and some points to go along with it that we drew out of our time together with this an opportunity to pray to God about it. Because you know what this stuff we're talking about isn't something you just go home and do on your own. You get God involved with this. Amen? You begin to do these things on a regular basis, growing in love the way Paul says, I pray for you all the time that you'll grow in love. Why? Because everything else about your love, life is dependent upon this. This is how important it is. Mm -hmm. Until it's important enough, you don't go home and practice and you never become it. But you start practicing it. Amen? You practice patience. What is patience? Putting up with something. It's kind of simple, isn't it? Or waiting. Waiting on things. Not being over anxious, right? Being kind. That means you're actually going to do something for somebody. Now, again, I encourage you, make this a process, a daily process, where you're growing in it, getting God involved, praying the Spirit about it. This is a spiritual process. Every time you do, there's a changing of you. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Now, when we were going through this, I don't know if you remember, but it doesn't do it at all. We like to make excuses for things. All excuses do is they disable the process. You know... <laughs> Ever seen somebody that's kind of got a problem? You know, like, they got a thought process problem. You're going to have a thought process problem if you're making an excuse for any of them. Right? <laughs> this says it keeps no record of wrongs. That means if you don't have a record of wrongs, there's no replaying of a record of wrongs. Right? <laughs> <laughs> somebody did something to you, you just don't even know what it was because you don't keep record of it at all. Now, that sounds like I'm just hitting that one real quick. Is, is it okay if we kind of hit it real quick? I just encourage you every time, because you have a choice, you have a thought process, every time you decide whether or not to record a wrong done. And we are very good at recording wrongs done. Are we not? I don't want to see any hands. Because <laughs> we're good because at because I don't want to magnify that virtue that you have. We're good at that forgetting anti virtue that you have. We're we're good at forgetting what we need to remember, but we're really good at remembering what we should be forgetting. <laughs> Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah. But when you when you see this and you see, 
Oh, that's a knowledge of love. What is that? That's a thought process. We, we just thought about this, didn't we? Recording a wrong done. Oh, but that'll hurt. Yeah. Yeah, you and Valentine are going to get to die <laughs> for this to happen. Right? That's what happens with love. You die, somebody else wins. Amen? That is part of... But every time you choose that, your thought processes are getting out of a rut and they're getting onto the path of righteousness. Mm -hmm. And it's enabling you to be somebody that somebody else needs in their life. That's right. Amen? That's right. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. Hey, we got to actually be something. Instead of not be something. Do you like that? It always protects. It always trusts. It always hopes. It always perseveres. That sounds like a master class to me. Sounds like something that almost seems overwhelmingly difficult. But you know how you eat an elephant? One bite at a time, right? <laughs> Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, there they will cease. Sometimes we just want to lean on the spiritual, the prophecies, the prophetic. And you know what? Pro prophecies are, are nothing if there's no thought processes of love in action. Amen? And not just the processes, the choices that go along with them. Where there are tongues, they will be still. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. But love never fails. Amen? Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for this day that we're going to experience this week called Valentine's Day. And whoever uh, was this, or these people, or whoever they were that went before us, that, that are, uh, have, have caused this day to be brought about, Lord, we're thankful for, the, for the, the opportunity we have in this day, but on a continual basis, Lord God. We thank you for today in this process, Lord God, that we can, we can be transformed by we, who we are. Our potential for success in life can be supernaturally impacted by the very thoughts that you've given us from your word, Lord God. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity that we have. Lord, we've just opened it. We've just opened this can up a little bit. There's so much in there that we have to grow in, that we, that we get to grow in in you, Lord God. We thank you that you've made us a new, create, a new creation in Christ, Lord, that, that we're a creation of love, that we're a product of your heart. But Father, we thank you that you've given us thoughts that will transform us as we are renewed in them. So we thank you and we heighten the importance and the, the value of this, this incredible opportunity that we have, Lord God, in love today. Hallelujah. God, I, I pray that you would help us in this in these, these choices, Lord God, with those who are nearest to us, sometimes, Father God, we can, we can discard some of these elements of love with those who are near to us with, because we've gotten in the habit of it, Lord God. I pray that you would awaken in us <laughs> revelation of where there are ruts in our minds, Lord God, that are disabling who we really are in you. In how we're relating to those who are nearest to us, God. I pray that you would help us in this regard. God, 
Change us, we pray. And we submit ourselves. We present our, our bodies as living sacrifices. Let it be us. Let it be our flesh that dies. And let it be your love that rises, Lord God, in its place for those nearest to us. But, but God, we pray that you would help us to begin to expand our realm of love's influence in our life. Rather than withdrawing and, and becoming self-centered uh, around those who might rub us the wrong way, God, even in your body here, Lord God, I pray that there would be a, a laying down of our lives that is an exercise of your love through us. And in that process, Father God, I pray that everybody here this morning, God, that we're going to grow in your love but we're going to grow in its impact in our minds and in who we are and the fruit of its righteousness in our lives. I pray that in the name of Jesus. And Lord God, I thank you that all of us sitting here today, Lord, we just lift up our gaze to the author and the finisher of our faith. Help us in this today, we pray. We cannot do it in our own strength, but in your strength we can do anything, Lord God. Love is, is not just resident, it's growing in each one of us. We lay claim to this today. We look forward to its results, its produce in our lives. Like Pastor Kim said, and, and Philippians 1, 9, Lord God, as it said, it's for your glory that this has taken place, Lord. And we submit ourselves to be instruments of your glory in this very way today. Be glorified in our lives as love lives. Hallelujah. And our flesh dies. Lord, we thank you for what's behind those valentines in our life, this incredible process that you're causing to take place. Thank you for today. It's effect in our life. In Jesus' name, amen.